Welcome into our Golf Channel headquarters. I'm Chantel McCabe, he's Trip Eisenhower, and we're gonna be talking for the next several minutes about Mickey Wright passing on Monday at the age of 85 years old. She had some uh, complications with her health recently, but boy, did she live a fulfilling and meaningful life. And I know you especially love her swing, and ah. not just you, Ben Hogan, and pretty much everybody else. It was so fluid, but pick a few things that really made it a remarkable swing. Okay, um, just from a technical standpoint, uh, it had all of the power elements that we talk about today. She had it. She was by far the longest female player of her era, and she would be today, even with that golf swing and the new technology. I think it would have translated just fine. Um, ben Hogan used to watch her hit balls. I mean, that, that says everything you need to know right there because he did not watch people hit balls mm -hmm. except her. He said her swing was perfect. Um, I did a thing on Golf Central Monday where I compared it to Jack Nicklaus at the top. Uh, mm -hmm. It looks just like a female Jack Nicklaus. I mean, the coil in the lower body, the turn, the width. Um, she did not have the flying right elbow that Jack had, but she had everything else. And, and just from there, it, it, was a, it was such a gradual buildup of power. We talk about that a lot, like players, you know, amateurs have trouble when they, they, they jerk the club away and all their speed's at the top of the golf swing and they slow down through mm. the ball. It's why they don't hit, it's not as why they're as efficient with the lower body. She had a long, slow, graceful backswing that built into enormous speed through the ball. Mm. Great rhythm, great high finish, could hit the ball very high for her time. Um, I've got it as, I would say, top six swings in the game. Wow. And the best female swing of all time. Yeah. Not, no, not even close. I don't even think, um, I, I loved Annika's swing and a lot of what she did. Um, but I tell you what, that, that uh, to me was... Uh, the thing and, and, and Chantel, we, we we look at you know Kathy Whitworth passing her. We got to remember Mickey Wright quit playing in her thirties. Right, thirty four. She unofficially retired. She was still kicking around, basically yeah. fulfilling sponsor obligations. But the winning really came in the sixties. And you look at the four years: sixty one, sixty two, sixty three, sixty four. Over forty wins, ten Remarkable. win seasons, four years in a row. Put that into perspective because I think that's what really punches this point through of how good she was. People say, oh, well, what was the competition like? How many tournaments were there even around? It's like yeah. there actually were fewer tournaments back then, so all the more reason why she just swept the field. Yeah, I mean, we did pretty much won, you know, 70% of the tournaments, basically. <laughs> I mean that's that's I mean that would be you know equivalent of uh, somebody going out and 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 winning you know 20 times on the PGA tour. Yeah. I mean that that would be the equivalent or even more than that really. Mm -hmm. But and it was funny because Kathy Whitworth we 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 talked to her on Monday on Golf Central uh, through the phone and and very gracious Kathy Whitworth and what she she basically said you know uh, she she said Mickey Wright would have been in the hundreds mm. had she kept playing. But why she quit playing, everybody's like, why did she stop? Here's the problem. Because the tournaments all wanted her. She mm -hmm. she If there was a tournament, they demanded her be there. Right. And she was so, um, you know, she was so respectful of that. And she did show up. And yeah. she got burned out, basically. Yeah. That's, that's what it was. She said this quote to Golf Digest several years back. It wasn't the years, it was the mileage. Yeah. And I thought that was that's so it. revealing. And for... What people don't think about with the fame, especially when it wasn't a flashy or sexy thing to do being a professional athlete no. in general, let alone a female. Like, yeah. think about that era in the 60s. You were a wife. You were a household person. We know how different the culture is now. Yeah. But imagine being as bold as her. She just loved the game. That's why she played. But then to have all these obligations, to feel the pressure of things now that we take for granted. Yeah. But Maybe you could, exp I know you weren't playing in that era, but maybe give us some context to what that actually looked like. Well, I mean, for it's hard for me to say. I mean, I, just from things I've read and things that, that you hear and other people have said, the fact that she, it was for the love of the game. Yeah. That's what it was, because back then it wasn't about the money. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, and, and no means. even in the men's game, it wasn't really about the money at that point. It, I mean, it was about the records and the competition and the thrill of that. And I think that, you know, she thrived on that. I mean, she loved that. She was a very introspective, very quiet person. She yeah. was not, 
you know, a, a big personality by any stretch of Which the Which stinks because I think that now hurts when we talk about her and look back in history. Like, you would think somebody with her caliber and her resume, this would have been talked about at nauseum on sports networks, sports stations, yeah. sports programming. But it's the fact that not only the era, but maybe her personality kind yeah. of hurt her in a way for the way that we recognize her, which stinks because we should be basing a professional athlete on their professional resume, yeah. not how charismatic they no, are. No, what do you think about that? Well, look, if we're going to talk professional resume, I think one of the greatest female athletes of all time for her sport. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no question about it. I think, I think you could look at, at uh, certain players in tennis, Martina Navitarola. Um, you, you, you look at uh, you know, Serena Williams. Um, she is that kind of transcendent female athlete. And, um, yeah, the, the, the personality the, might have hurt the marketing aspect of it, but you know what? It didn't hurt the accomplishments because, no. good gosh, she is highly accomplished. And, right. Uh, she will be missed, and uh, there is a, a little bit of a hole, but she did say, in, in a quote, she said, when I'm in heaven, I want to be there with a two iron in my hand at Sea Island, and I'm going to hit the green. And I guarantee you, she has. Oh, my goodness. Well, she was still practicing yeah. in her most recent I years, know. and she revealed uh, recently that she was still watching golf and uh, actively talking to some girls out on the LPGA, Good continuing to grow the game, not only a founder, but a very influential person in the game of golf as we honor and remember Mickey Wright.